Hello and welcome back to this video series on control structures. Uh, in this video, I want to uh, code out a basic problem uh, that utilizes selection and sequence um, and it uses it multiple times. So here's the problem that we're going to be coding out. Uh, create a lottery game. And this is a problem that I pulled out from a, a old, old textbook. Um, but we're going to create a program that allows the end user to uh, input three numbers and compare those three numbers to uh, some randomly generated numbers. Uh, and based on what they enter, uh, we will give them an award if they match any of them correctly. So if they match one correctly, they'll get $10. If they match two correctly, they'll get a $100 award and so forth. And so this problem here, we're going to code it out um, using only selection. So you could, like, it would be easier to do like a looping structure uh, to code this out, but we're going to do it the long way and use selection structure. And I'll say that there's many different ways of coding this out. I'm going to take a really basic practical approach to coding this out so you can see um, my mindset in terms of walking through this problem. Um, and also this will be a two part video, so I'll, uh, this, this could get quite long. And so it will be part one and then part two. All right, so at this juncture here, if you look at my code, I've already uh, put together some sequence statements here, some declarations. Uh, what may be new here is that we're using a new class from the, uh, the standard library, Java standard library, and it's called random. And so I had to import that class. And that's on line one. And I also had to import the scanner because I have to use that to, uh, to receive input from my uh, console. Um, what I've done, I, did, I basically declared my variables. I have random guess one, two, and three. And then I have the user guess. This is what I receive from the console from the end user. Uh, whatever numbers they enter and it's going to be from zero to nine and so with the random class i have to create an instance of that so random ran equals new random and i would say just flow it at this point uh, this is what we need to do to um to implement this random functionality into our program and then here you'll see that this is where i'm generating those three numbers what i'd like for you to do is pause the video and write down the statements you would need uh, to generate user input for three random numbers that they decide to enter. And so we have the random numbers that the computer generated for us, but we want to uh, basically give me some statements here that would um, allow the end user to input their numbers. All right, so hopefully this is what uh, you came up with, is uh, just some basic output and input. Um, you'll see that I'm parsing. Uh, the number as it comes back from the console because everything that comes back from the console is going to be of string data type and i'm using this integer class and using one of the parts and functions um, to get the value and uh, convert it into an integer value and i'm storing it into uh, the variables i declared at, at the top here so this, the next thing i want to do here is i want to focus on the algorithm uh, that i would want to use for this um, an algorithm is determining uh, which particular number actually matches one of the guess numbers. And so you'll see that I'll have, let's see here, selection structure. And so uh, in this case here, uh, what I'm going to do is, like I guess I'm going to do this uh, in a step-by-step, in a step, and I'm going to write comments here, but I'm going to have a structure that determines if our first user guess, uh, and that'll be user guess one, matches any of the three numbers. Um, I want to take, make note here is that I use these Boolean values um, because what I'm going to do is like uh, raise, the, raise my hand if uh, one of the numbers is found within the random numbers. Um, and you'll see how I'll put that put together that structure. But what I'd like for you to do is, again, pause this video and try to figure out if you could figure out the structure, the, the selection structure, that would um, compare your user, this user, guess one, to all of the random numbers that were generated by uh, the computer. See if you can do that, and then uh, we'll, we'll pick it back up here. All right, so hopefully you thought through it. 
Uh, and again, let me just, just reiterate that this is the part where you may experience something called productive struggle. Um, you have to think through this and figure out like how do I how do I accomplish this problem? Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is start with the first structure. And I'm gonna do this for each number. So each user guess. So user guess one, user guess two, and user guess three. And again, you could have coded this problem out a number of different ways, but this way here, you can kind of see the various steps and, and how we're gonna go about tackling this problem. So I'm gonna do is a user if statement. It's equal to random. And I just do user guess one. I'm gonna compare it to each random guest number. And so here, um, I am using the OR statement because I just want to check to see if either one of these is correct or if, it, if they match, right? And so the OR statement allows at least one. If I used AND, that means all three of these would have to match. I mean, that's not what we want. So and then let's say, for instance, if they do match it, right? So one actually matches one of the random, uh, the user guess one number matches one of the randomly guessed numbers from the computer. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a statement uh, that would flip my first Boolean value to say, hey, it's not false no more, but it's true. First number has been guessed. So I'll say first number equals true. And then I'll <clears throat> um, do this for each number here. So I'll just copy this. And I'll just change this here to um, use a guess number one, use a guess number two, and then use a guess number three. So this would be two, two, and two. And this would be three. Three. And now I'll change this here to second number. I think that's right. Second number. Yep. Yeah. All right. And so we're checking for each number um, that the user entered and checking it against the user, um, the, the random numbers that were generated by the computer. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here, user guess three. There we go. So I'll save that. And one of the things here at the bottom is that it mentions that uh, make certain that your application accommodates repeating digits. For example, if a user guesses one, two, and three, and the randomly generated digits are one, one, and one, do not give the user credit for three correct guesses. Just Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my screen had blinked out uh, there. And so, okay, we're back. Um, so what I was mentioning is that uh, here in this last part, we want to make certain that your application accommodates repeat repeating digits. Um, so the way that our current application is set up is that um, each of the guesses is going to be checked against a random number. And this is assuming that the user inputs three separate numbers, right? And so if they input three separate numbers, then it meets the demands of this, this, uh, this last paragraph here. 
Um, the only way that this breaks is that if the user enters, let's say, two, two, three, right, uh, double digits or two of the same digit, uh, then it won't get accounted for. Um, we can make amends for that. Uh, the way to make amends for that would be to um, <clears throat> uh, essentially check the the user guess number uh, from the let's say for instance if we're checking for user guess two we would check the value for user guess one and user guess three against user guess two um, and then also check to see if the, the the flag variable has been flipped or like say for instance first number guess has been flipped to true or not uh, we, so we can make amends for that but in this case here uh, we're just going to meet the demands of what it's asking us to do uh, in this example um, and so now we want to just move on to uh, basically allocating the award uh, money that they would receive if they guessed uh, any of the numbers correctly. So what we're going to do here is now put a comment and then check the various variables, the first number guessed if it's equal to true. And we're going to do the various permutations for that. So here we'll say <clears throat> uh, determine if one guess number matches random number and here I'll say if first number guess is equal to true and or I'm sorry or second number guess is equal to true or third number guess is equal to true then we'll just basically go ahead and say user award equals one match award that's correct. So I'm going to do the various permutations for uh, determining if, if if two is guessed, um, and then also if three is guessed, um, and then you'll see how this plays out. So I'm going to pause this video and just type that in so that the video doesn't get too long, and then we'll just uh, discuss it. All right. So <clears throat> we did the first one here. Um, determine if one. Uh, guess number one it matches number uh, any random number and then i put the other permutations in here so i said if the first number guess is equal to true and second number guess is equal to true um or if first number guess is equal to true and third number guess is equal to true so i'm doing the, the various permutations and seeing if two numbers match um, if that's the case if any of these three i guess groups here or um, um expressions because there's multiple expressions within this group i kind of consider this as a group right um, then give them the two match award and then here at the bottom is determine if all guest numbers match and that's basically saying if they matched and um, if first number guess is equal to true second number guess is equal to true then give them the three match award and this here is this if they matched um the, the numbers all three in exact order so user guess one is equal to user guess one and then so forth. Uh, give them the three match in order. And then here's just my output statement saying the guess numbers and then what the numbers the user the number the user entered and then determining uh, if they did didn't get an award, it'll say sorry. But if they did, it'll tell them the, the award value. So let's run this. Oh, that's this plus pro here. So here we'll enter in two, some random numbers here, four and six. And they say the, the three generated random numbers are six, six, one. Um, and then I entered in two, four, six. I only have one value. So we're meeting demands of this, this first paragraph. I mean, this last paragraph here. If we have two six and it's not giving us uh, 
the, the two matching, which would give us 100. So it's, it's doing what we intend for it to do and only matching on one, uh, six for the random numbers. So if we run this again, say four, five, oops, five, and one. So we didn't get any right. So sorry you didn't guess any numbers correctly. And here I say two, six, and eight. Nope. Last one. Five, two, three. Yep, so we got the, the three correct. So again, a simple program that really um emphasizes some of the things that we've been talking about in the previous videos. So and or logic using uh, the relational expressions operator operators, uh, but then also um, um, the structures, right? The number of different decision structures. This is just one way to code this problem. Um, you could have took a different approach, but uh, I wanted to do it this way because it's easy to, easier to see. So hopefully this is helpful in terms of looking at how we can take a problem and begin to code it out um, and meet the demands and the requirements of what it's asking. All right, so that concludes this series. I, I did say that this was going to be a part A and part B, but I decided just to, to quickly code this out and make it one video. So uh, that'll be the last video for uh, talking about decision structures uh, in terms of the controls. There's going to be more videos in terms of looping structures that will that'll, that'll be added a little bit later. Stay tuned.